All right, we got something in the mail today. Or it wasn't mail, but it was a large truck. This is our tank. Panda dog's helping. That's really pretty. I mean, of all the hard times we've had with finding vendors, a Luma tank. They pulled through. They pulled through. So far. We'll see. Very nice. It's very pretty. That is beautiful. Beautiful welds. Seventy gallons. With all of our fittings. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put the cinder in here. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Facts. Facts. And that's gonna be where you fill it up. Okay. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Yeah. Thanks. You can kind of see where the baffles are. You can see the welds. Oh yeah, yeah. Slightly okay. along here, baffle there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Baffle there. It's baffling. <laughs> <laughs> So we're kind of so, effed if we're not in the U.S. So we might have to do, yeah. Spare parts. Yeah, that's kind of annoying, I guess, but whatever. Nothing's perfect. Yeah. As a wise man, Dan Wood once told me, everything's a compromise. Let's talk about everything else we need to do this project. This is going to be rubber. For the tank to sit on. This is two inch wide. I just got some really cheap stuff. This stuff is crazy expensive and I wasn't sure exactly what size we're gonna need so I got this for now. We'll see if this works. It's got these edges here which are meant to go over straps and I'm gonna try to use it for the top and the bottom. So some of it will be used on straps, some of it will not. We should have plenty of that. This is the new cinder so this tells us the level of the fuel so this is a little float here this moves up and it tells us the float level i believe this is 10 to 180 ohms i'll put that up on the screen screen if i'm incorrect but i think it's somewhere around there 10 to 180 ohms which is what the video gauge on the Unimog uses. And this is a little rubber gasket that goes between this and the tank itself, seals it. These are all of our fittings. Fuel in, fuel out. This is our vent, and this is built with this little bearing in there so that if the truck flips over for some reason, it clogs up the, the tube so there's no fuel that can make its way out. So when it's right side up, it's venting air, which it's supposed to do. If the truck for some reason rolls, it stops any fuel from being able to leak out of this vent, which means less likely to have a fuel leak, which means less likely to have fire. So that's what that is for. This is new fuel line from Bellmetric. Actually, Matt was just here. He happened to be in town. Super nice guy. Him and his father, who started Bellmetric. Family business. Fantastic place. This is a tool to help us put the hose onto the banjo fittings that are on the Unimog. That's a bit of a process, and a lot of people don't do that, but I wanted to kind of keep the same, same hose so that's what we have here. This is all metric hose, so not a whole lot of places you can get that. And this is just like the original that, that comes on the truck. I'm not sure if I'm going to need that right away. We'll see. This is going to be a filter. I, I believe it's a, a water filter. Just an added filter to the current filters that are on there. And these are new fuel filters that go in the stock Unimog place. 
which I haven't changed yet because I didn't want to mess with the system at all until I was actually doing the tank. We have stainless steel hose clamps, again from Bell, Bell Metric. Those go with the hose. More stainless steel in a different size. This is a brass T-fitting and there is a line that comes off of the top of the block. It's it's accessed via the doghouse. I think it goes to the return line. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but I think it's plastic currently. This one's going to be brass, so that should be better. But it goes from this size, this normal size, down to this really small size. So if we end up doing all the hose, we're going to end up replacing that as well. And then this, this is a new style Bosch like priming pump. This is what you use if you have air in the line and need to, to get fuel back through into the engine uh, without air. So this could be used at any point, I think, but we'll definitely need to use it since we're going to drain the lines when we take this all apart. So this is a newer version, spring, uh, much better, I think, than the old plastic version that's on there. And this, you can get these at uh, Expedition Imports. All right, first thing we're gonna do is drain the tank. Obviously, we can't do this with fuel in there. It's a 19 millimeter, although if you're watching this and you have a U1300, you don't have this fuel tank. So, it's really not important. I do think that this tank came on older models, but I'm not sure which ones. More of the round, the round featured Unimogs. I don't know why I thought it could all fit in one five gallon barrel. Alright, next up we gotta take these off. Now I've already marked these from a previous project. We've got white as the return line, blue as the feed line, and those are marked up by the engine as well so I can easily go up there and reference them to check which is which if I forget. And then of course this one is, uh, this is the vent that's red. And then this is the wire, which we can get to via here. It's actually two wires. Those are eight millimeter. Little tiny guys. That's off. So if you want to see that, there you go. The other one of these I have has a, a little filter basket down here. I heard something moving around in that tank when I pulled it off, so that might be that. I hope that's it. All right, so next up we need to take this off. This one over here, we should be able to just keep for now. Uh, we may use that. I may use that to mount other things here, like maybe that filter. Maybe I'll make a bracket that comes off of here. Uh, we might cut that off and do some sort of angle, some triangle here to add more strength, since this is gonna be a much heavier tank. 
but uh, I won't really discuss that or deal with it until we get to the fabricator, until TJ can look at it. Forgot to mention, once we cut this off, there's really no going back. I have no way to mount that other tank to there. All right, since I have three of these, let's talk about them. So this is what came off of my truck, which I think was a 406, 416 tank, I think, not positive. Uh, Expedition Imports has one of these for sale, but theirs has two of these holes. So I don't know if mine's special or what, but I believe it's 90 liters, which is about 23 gallons. Next up, I think this is a pretty stock U1300L tank, um, maybe military specific. I know there are different versions. It's not the only stock one that came on the U1300, but a very common one. And I believe that this is 160 liters, which is like 42 gallons, something like that. And I've gone over this, this won't fit. And then we have our custom one. This is from Aluma Tank. This is 70 gallons, which is 265 liters. So what I'm going to do next is weigh these and see what the difference in weight is. This one's really light. That one's much heavier. And that one, I'm not sure how it compares to that. So let's check it out. First up, we have the 90 liter tank. That is 23.4 pounds. Next up, 160 liter tank, 58.7 pounds. And lastly, the Aluma tank, 68.3 pounds. All right, so I forgot to mention that these two tanks are steel, and that's aluminum, obviously, aluminum tank. So we're not gonna have the corrosion issues with that one that we would with these. And it's lighter. So we, that one's 10 pounds more, but it's 100 liters larger. So a pretty significant dis difference in size and only 10 pounds added in weight. Obviously the extra fuel will weigh a lot more, but that would be the case if we had two of these. So let's put this thing on and see what it looks like. All right, that fits exactly how I had hoped it would. I want a little bit of space here because we're going to use this as a step. So I want a little bit of gap between the, the edge of my step here and the tank. Uh, we got plenty of space here. Exactly how I'd hoped. Uh, we can get this as close as we need, but I think that might be fine right there. There's really no perfect spot for it. And uh, yeah, that's beautiful. I don't know how I feel about the aluminum color. I think it'll probably be better in the end if it's black, but I'm not gonna worry about that now. We can always paint it later. All right, next up we have the fittings. So this is our vent hose. This is all that was there. So we just kind of went to, to nowhere. We're gonna use that temporarily. That's gonna use this fitting here. Now these are all MPTF, which is what, national pipe thread or something pipe thread. F meaning fuel, and I guess 
the difference between that and regular MTT. The threads are slightly different. They're not interchangeable. And you don't need any kind of tape or stuff to put on the threads. No kind of sealant on the threads themselves. I guess because you don't want whatever that is on the threads to potentially t contaminate whatever is in the tank itself. So I think that's why it's used with fuel. Don't quote me on that. I'm no expert. That's my basic Googling of it. I did have to look around a lot to find MPTF fittings of this size. And they're going to be non-metric. So that's just because this is a US made tank. And let's see if this fits on there. It does not. Not even close. Alright. I did not put a hose clamp on there. I might do that later. I might put a real, a longer hose on here at some point. Gotta look into that, but I think for right now that should be fine. It's just a vent. Next up are these, which are also MPTF. So nothing is needed on the threads. And I do believe MPT and MPTF are both tapered. So that means that the threads actually deform as you tighten it up. This is actually pretty interesting. I, I found that it only fits in one way. So there must not, these not, these aren't evenly spaced. So this only goes on one single way. Like you can see there, a couple of them do line up, but not, not this one. That one doesn't line up. That one doesn't line up. There we go. Boom. So it can only go in one way. Which means you have two things to line up. I had a feeling these wouldn't fit. So I gotta go look up and see what size these actually are and get some different bolts. And then we also need to put this on obviously. So there are four main things to making this work. Number one, and this is probably the biggest thing that finally registered with me, is you have a straw. All that is is a straw. It's a metal pipe. It comes up, it's bent here, you can see, it goes out here, and then you connect this hose to it. That hose goes through the truck to the injection pump, which is on the side of the engine, and that is what sucks up the fuel in the tank up here to the engine. That's all it is. So this thing doesn't actually do anything to deliver the fuel. It's just a straw. So you could probably just run this hose directly into this tank from the engine and it would just pull it right out. You could probably run it into one of those and it would pull it out. So I don't think that this is special in any way other than it's just mounted to the tank. This has a filter on the end of it, but that's just a filter. It'll actually come off. And in fact, this one has come off and is in there right now. I gotta pull that out somehow. So it's good. You don't want stuff getting into your fuel, but it's just a filter. So that's really not that important. So that's number one, you have the straw. 
Number two, there's a second straw, which is right here. It's a little bit shorter because it's not going to actually be drawing fuel up, so it doesn't need to get to the bottom of the tank. This one is actually a return, so the the engine, I'm not sure where it comes out, maybe the injection pump somewhere else, but you have return fuel, fuel that isn't used by the engine, is sent back through hose, back into this straw, and then just dumped right into the, the tank again. So any excess fuel that wasn't used, and I don't know that process at all, I don't know how injection pumps work or any of that, that's way above my pay grade at this point. This is <laughs> this is a big deal for me right now. So, uh, yeah, no need to comment on that. I don't know. And I, at this point, I don't want to know. This is, this is a big enough project for me at the moment. So, uh, anyway, it's just a straw, brings fuel back in. No big deal, very simple. So that's number two. Number three, let's go with the sending unit. And this is just a metal arm that goes up and down. It's a float. It floats on top of the, the fuel. Just like in your toilet, you have a float. And the float rises, it tells your toilet to stop putting water in it, right? This is the same thing, except this has a little electric wire coming from it, and it sends a signal up. You can see it here. I'll put it like this, that'll make it simpler. This is supposed to be attached here, it just needs to be soldered back on. Uh, you can see this one is attached. And then that goes up through the top to these posts, and that's where you connect the two wires that I took off of the other one. And I'll show you those again in a second. One of them is ground, so it's just a grounding wire. The other one is a wire that goes up to the dashboard to the gauge that tells you how much fuel you have. Full or empty, right? And basically this sends a different signal. It's, uh, it's measured in ohms, OHM, which I believe is a measure of resistance. So I guess the resistance increases or decreases. It goes from 10 ohms, and actually I don't know which way it goes, top or bottom. So we have 10 ohms at the bottom, or maybe it's opposite, 180. Anyway, 10 ohms at the bottom, and then as it rises, it goes to 180 ohms, and then that corresponds with the gauge, which at 10 ohms is gonna be down low, and then as it goes up to 180, it shows you full. That is extremely simple. And that's all that is. Basically just one wire. I know the new, a lot of the newer ones are, are totally different and they're probably digital, I would guess, but that's unimportant here because that's not what we're talking about. So that's number three, the sending unit. Number four is very simple. Uh, we can see it on this one, okay. I couldn't couldn't see it on this one. There's a little grate here. That looks like it's perforated, so you can get air through there, I think. But anyway, this right here, that's just a way for air to escape. So if pressure builds up in here, in the tank, that air that air can escape through here, which goes out through here. It's a very simple, just fitting. This one's plastic. Um, you'll see the one on our truck. The new one is metal, but that's all it is. It's just a place for air to escape. So you could probably just drill a hole in the tank and air could escape and that'd do the same thing. I guess the problem with that would be that if any water ever made it onto the top of the, the tank, it could go into the tank, which you don't want. So from there, you just have a, a tube piece of hose, which th this is the, actually the one that was on there. It just pops on there, and then you just tie this up somewhere high so that if you go wading through deep water, you won't get water ingress back going down into the tank. And that's all it is. It's just an air escape. So that's it. That's your four things. Very simple, very straightforward. And these are exactly the same on this tank as they are on this tank. 
Yeah, because one of the things I got hung up on was, oh, my tank needs to have this special uh, pattern on it so we can put this on it. But nobody in the U.S. makes tanks like this. But you don't need this at all. So this is more common here. And there's, as you can see, one, two, three, four different things, just like that. The only difference between this and that is that this is broken into four separate holes. This is all built into one little snazzy unit. That's it. As far as I know. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna always caveat that because, you know, I am no expert at all. But let's talk about them, right? So this would be our pickup, right? Built into here, you can't see it and there's no way for me to show you except maybe the diagram, which I guess I could put that up. Uh, there is a straw, an, an aluminum straw welded into here, just like this straw and it goes all the way down to the bottom and it has a little support welded onto the bottom as well so that it can't move. So very strong, sturdy, and it's it's got a little bit of space before the bottom of the tank, so it doesn't actually touch the bottom of the tank. But you want it really low so that you can suck up as much f fuel as possible. So that, that hose is, or uh, straw is built in here, and then I just put this fitting on top, and we'll hook our hose to it, and it goes to the engine. Exactly the same as that. This one over here will be the return exactly the same. There's a uh, straw built in, welded on, just like that. This straw is the same depth as this straw, so that is a little bit different than this one. They made the return a little shallower or shorter on this one. Um, but these are exactly the same, so they're, I, I believe, interchangeable. I think we'll use this as the pickup though because it's closer to center of the tank. So that's two. Number three is the sending unit. And if you look at this sending unit, while it looks different and is built differently, it is the same thing. You got this little thing here that goes back and forth. This actually attaches here, that's a float, just like this one. It's smaller, but it's the same thing. And then this moves up and down. Um, the reason this one's apart uh, is because this one's made for the th that specific tank. So it's it's done, like it's made that way and that's the way it is. This is more of a universal thing for vintage cars. So it needs to be adjustable for different tank depths and heights and stuff. So we still need to install this. But you can see one wire going up to the top place to hook your wires to. Here's our wires. We got the signal wire and then the, uh, the ground. Just like this. That's it. It's the same thing. There's no difference here. And that gets bolted on there. And then number four, lastly, we have a vent. That's all that is. That brass piece is exactly the same as that. Except this one's a little bit different in that it has a little ball bearing. So when it sits upright like this, the ball bearing falls to the bottom and air can escape. If this tank were to flip over upside down, like the entire truck were to flip upside down, we had an accident, that ball bearing would then fall up and clog block the hole so you wouldn't have any f fuel escaping out of the, out of the tank. So it's a safety design, so that if you did flip the truck for some reason, you wouldn't have leaking fluid, fuel, you know, the stuff that burns. So that's it, four things. One, or sorry, one, two, three, four. Just like one, two, three, four. That's it. So once I figured that out, this I, this got so much easier for me. And it allowed me to finally make the, the call to spend the money and order this and have this made. Now let's get back to installing this thing. All right, pickup and return lines. We have them here. They're definitely not gonna reach when it's pulled out like this, I think. 
Um, I'm thinking I need to add maybe a foot and a half onto these, so maybe 18 inches for now. Now luckily, they have these metal inserts and then these little pieces of tubing were over them and this end is what connected to the the pickup. So I think that makes my life easier. Actually that definitely makes my life easier because then I don't have to run this polymide tubing uh, from the tank all the way up to the front. And the only reason I don't want to do that at this moment is just because of the work involved and in getting that done. Uh, this polymide tubing needs to connect to some banjo joints, banjo uh, fittings up front, and that's not an easy thing to do. It requires heating this up and pressing it on, and there's a special tool for it. So it's a whole process, and that's why a lot of people don't reuse this tubing. So what I'm gonna do is just get longer, I'm just gonna get 18 inch versions of regular fuel hose and probably reuse these hose clamps and clamp it, put it on there and clamp it down just like it was before just make these longer and then those spacers will be on there until I get this all mounted I'll probably wait also until we go to Colorado and have Rob look at the truck before I decide to replace the fuel line because we have that trip coming up, I don't want to get into that project and then be stuck because I can't do part of it or something like that. So I'm going to wait on that because it's not 100% necessary. Getting the tank was a big deal and we definitely needed to do that. All right. We need to take these and make them longer. I'm thinking about 18 inches long. So you can see here, this is the polymide tubing. And polymide tubing, as far as I've been told, uh, you don't actually use hose clamps for it. You have to heat it up to get it on, and then you get it on and it's just there and it, it creates a good seal on its own. And you don't actually use any hose clamps. So that's what it is here. They they pressed it onto this. I, I assume this is a, it's got the same style nipple on this other side here feels like it goes down to about here. What I got was just some fuel injection hose. It's 3 8 inch and that's going on here, which is actually very similar to what they had on here. It was just that short piece. Nice. And I'm just reusing these hose clamps. They seem to be fine. All right. So blue is from the pickup. White is the return. How do I know that? So in here, we have the injection pump, which is this large thing over here. And then this here is a fuel filter. So you can see there is a blue line here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's blue. It comes from the back, goes into the filter, and then through the filter, out of the filter, the other side goes up to Two more filters. These are actually the fuel filters. This is for the, the, the pump that we're going to use to that unscrews like so. And then this pumps up and down to bring the fuel through. So these are the filters and then from the filters you go into here into the injection pump and then from the injection pump, you have the white, and then that goes back, return. So I guess whatever isn't used by the injection pump ends up going back to the fuel tank. All right, we have our pickup, we have our vent, and our return. Those are all done. Last thing we need to do is hook up the sender. All right, so here is our sender. There's instructions that come with this. They're pretty straightforward. 
So I didn't film the whole process. Basically, you got to take this out for my tank. If you had a bigger tank than mine, then you would use this to extend it. This point from here to here needs to be half of the tank's height plus eighth inch for this. And then you, once you get that in place, it's the right height. You set this ball so that the top of the ball is dead even with the, the bottom of this gasket, which is what that is. So then empty tank is down here, full tank up here. And this is tightened. That's that. All right, so we have the sender in here. This seems to be oriented in only one way. That's the only way all five of the holes will line up correctly. And it seems to be lined up in a way so that the float goes front to back and not side to side. I'm assuming, I haven't been told this by anybody, but it would make sense that they did that so that it, these two pickup and return tubes that go all the way down wouldn't get hit by the float so that it, it goes this way, which is completely clear from front to back. So I'm assuming that they did this on purpose. Maybe somebody at Illumina, Illumitank, you know, all those Illumitank people who are watching can tell me whether or not that's true or not. All right, that is locked in and loaded. And we have our sender, so we're done. One, two, three, and four. All right, let's go get the primer on and then put some fuel in here and get this puppy started. All right, next up, we're gonna switch this out. This is like a, uh, a priming pump. And this is the new version of it. This is supposed to be better from what I've heard. Uh, <clears throat> this one seems to still be working just fine. But uh, since we're in here, and we've got air in the system anyway. Let's just get rid of this. Okay, according to this one, we just have some threads and a crush washer. And this is a 17. So I believe we just need to unthread that one and put this in there. I'm hoping we don't spew a bunch of fuel. And I don't see any other way to grab a hold of this. I guess we're just gonna That did work. There's a little spring in there. I'm going to use this little plastic straw to get this crush washer out so I don't mar the surface with a screwdriver. There we go. Back in there, there seems to be something in the center that fits up into there. There we go. Tighten that down. Let's go with the A tight. Somebody's going to ask me for the torque spec on that, and I don't have it. I uh, sorry, I didn't even bother to look it up. But I have a feeling I'm probably not gonna find it. So this goes goes up and down. This actually screws down too, so you can lock it in place. And then unscrew it. And pump. So what we're gonna do is use this pump here to pump through the fuel 
open up these bleed valves so the air can re release. So we do that until we get solid fuel coming out of these. Well, seems to be working. I thought it would die right away after it used all the fuel from the hoses. It's running. Let's see if the fuel gauge is working. Well, it's hard to say. It says it's really low, and that's actually true. I don't, I never looked before. I don't know how low this, this marker goes normally. So that could mean that it's working. It could mean that it's not. I guess we'll have to fill it up completely to see, see how that, that works and how accurate it is. We got uh, tie down straps holding on the fuel tank. So that should be good for a temporary drive to TJ in Huntington Beach to fabricate some real straps. All right, so it is quite a distance in the future from what you just saw. And I was going to film the work that TJ did on the tank and fixing it to the truck. We were in such a hurry to get out the door and get on our trip though, uh, I didn't have a chance to do that. And so I've been meaning to do it this whole time and I've, I'm just now doing it. And you can see the weather is crazy. Uh, it's snowing a bunch. Uh, but I will say that this tank went from Long Beach all the way to Colorado Springs and then from Colorado Springs all the way to Washington central Washington and I had no problems at all tank worked great uh, the fuel worked great so um, pretty happy with it but what I will do right now is show you the work the TJ did and how it's been affixed to the truck now one thing I want you to remember when you're looking at this because he was doing this like the day before we left uh, TJ did put a, a coat of paint on uh, the stuff that he made but uh, he didn't have a chance to do like the full deal because he just didn't have time and I didn't have time to go home and take it off and, and repaint it all so we are starting to get a little bit of rust on the new stuff but um, yeah once we get back to Long Beach I'll disassemble the whole thing uh, strip it all back down and paint it correctly so we're good but I was super happy that he was nice enough to paint it at all because that wasn't part of the deal originally so thank you TJ for that uh, I was so happy that we had some sort of coating on it instead of just bare metal because that's how I probably would have taken off with <laughs> and it would really be rusting now if that were the case so anyway let's get to it you can see one of the things I wanted and the reason I, I placed this here the way I did was because I wanted to put this step here and have this step go all the way down to the end. And if you look at my previous video, you can see that the steps that came on this, this material here, this used to go all the way back here, and then it had a ridge that came up. So what he did is just cut off the edge, and it was already welded to fit around the, the steel underneath, and then riveted it down to the steel frame. So that ended up fantastically and that step is invaluable. And I have it along the whole thing. So I can use it for the front door, I can use it for the back door, I can even use it for the box in the back. So that worked out fantastically, love it. We're gonna end up painting that black when I get back home. And then we're also gonna do the same thing on the other side, but we didn't have time. So the other thing that he did, he welded on some uh, angle iron here on this side and this side to capture the tank on the bottom. He also he also welded a crossbar across the back and then he attached the straps. You can see they're drilled into the frame here and they come up and they're just bent steel and they go back and down. Same thing on this one. It's just welded in here. So here's the bottom of that front, the front side of the strap on that one. And then there's the bottom of the front side of the strap on that one. 
and then if we come back here you can see the back side of the strap and how he's got those bolted on there's one there he welded this tab on so that was nice and then over here same thing welded the tab on got the bolt and we can adjust the tightness of it there he also put rubber underneath here you can't really see that but there's definitely rubber isolator in between the tank and the the frame and this is what i was showing you earlier this bar here he added on for extra rigidity and i think he added this bar as well yeah he added this bar and then the angle iron is on top of this so that supports the end and actually i think he added this bar as well yeah pretty much anything that's rusting <laughs> is what he added on so he added this bar and that has the angle iron on top of it as well to capture the end and that's pretty much it except for so with this tank the amount of fuel that's in it, it increased the weight that's on this step a ton uh, and then we also step on this way out here so there's a huge um, lever there so he added these this steel pipe here he bent it welded it on the top welded it on the bottom added that for strength this this one was already on there but it was pretty small and pretty far back so added that one and then he also added one over here same type thing tube attached to the back bent comes down it attaches to this piece that I didn't cut off that was the support for the old tank so that ended up being useful so that attaches to there so we have a, an extra support there extra support on the left and two straps and some extra crossbars going vertical and horizontal and then the step so that's pretty much it it's worked out great no problems whatsoever all the fittings have been working great the fuel tank gauge works great uh, i'm super happy with this tank so when we get back to long beach what i'm going to end up doing is pulling it all off and just painting everything black so this will just blend in and the whole bottom of the truck will just be black so that's the goal all right thanks for watching